Thank you very, very much. I uh, thank the ranking, ranking member for leading me the time. Uh, Madam Speaker, today is a day of great pride for every member that's just been sworn in, particularly our newly elected members. It's a great honor to be elected to serve in this body. On election day, our constituents went to their polling places and voted for us. We should be thankful for that, particularly so when far too many of our constituents, regardless of their political leanings, voting on election day was an unnecessarily burdensome, time-consuming, and unpleasant experience. In my home county in South Carolina, voters reported waiting in line for over four hours. One young voter thought ahead of time, brought an iPad, and watched the entire Hunger Games movie while in line. Others, understandably, didn't have three hours to spare on a work day. In Detroit, Michigan, Gina Porter waited in line for more than three hours before giving up. Danielle Wilkins voted after waiting for four hours. In Lee County, Florida, Angela DeFrancesco went to her polling place in the morning with her infant son. Seeing the three-hour line, she decided to come back later. After finding a babysitter, she returned in the afternoon, at which point the line was on to five and a half hours. Unable to be away from her infant son that long, she left without voting. As President Obama said on election night, we have to fix that. As we take our places in this Congress that we earned on election day, now is the time to fix it. This motion to commit will ensure that no voter has to wait longer than an hour to cast a ballot. We have a long history of struggle over the right to vote in this country. Yet time and again, we have reaffirmed the principle that every eligible American has an equal right to cast a ballot without facing discrimination. A three-hour wait is discrimination against those who have to work, those who have to take care of their kids, and those whose health prevents them from waiting in line for such a long time. Long lines are the 21st century version of poll taxes and literacy tests, disenfranchising the least advantaged and the most vulnerable citizens. We have an obligation to ensure that every American has an equal opportunity to exercise their constitutional right to vote. My good friend and lifelong colleague, John Lewis, has called the right to vote precious, almost sacred. The, another 30 seconds. The most, thank you. Thomas and the most powerful nonviolent tool to have to create a more perfect union. John could not be here to speak on this motion today. But I'm proud to stand in his stead with Mr. Miller. It is a small but important step toward fulfilling our obligation to protect the right to vote. And I urge the passage of this commitment. Thank you so much. Now you back. Gentlemen,